if I could give a gift to the world, it would be this concept in action. If it is to be, it is up to me. Now, some of you might think that that's a pretty bodacious statement, that it doesn't require the help or collaboration with others, or that one might be thinking more highly of themselves. I would submit to you that just the opposite is true, because we definitely do need one another. So, if you're curious and courageous, let me show you why I believe this gift has the potential to permeate where we live, work, and play. Let me start by sharing where this statement even comes from. My father, yes, it's true. He has said this to me since I can remember. And over my life, I have shared with him my frustrations, my disappointments, and anguish, you name it. And when I was done explaining all that had happened and the wrong of everything, he would say, if it is to be, it is up to me. I got to tell you, that phrase was not what I was wanting to hear in the heat of the moment when I wanted some answers or resolution. So why do I believe in this concept so much that I want to gift it to you? Well, I'm glad you asked. To give you a picture of this concept and how it has played out in my life, allow me to be transparent. In my adult life, I've been widowed and divorced. I've experienced some of the deepest losses, the kind that don't quite align with how life cycle should go. And up to this point, I've put myself through college. I've advocated within and for community regarding education, violence, mental and physical wellness, economic empowerment, and raised my family mostly as a single mom. June 24th, 2001. A quiet Sunday, hanging out at home, my father swings by on his way up north. He and I perform CPR. This is the day I became a widow. June 9th, 2013. After a rousing game of kickball fun, a call is received. One of my sons has been shot. December 9, 2013. Unexplained symptoms that go on for days wind up with a relatively normal procedure to find answers. I am left with a mother no longer. So let's unpack what happens when life sucker punches you and gives you an uppercut just because. What do you do when life is no longer how you once knew it? I can tell you that each of these losses left me feeling as though I was suspended in a free fall that had no end. And while I may have rattled off these dates succinctly, I can assure you that the journey has been anything but. My mashup of thoughts have included, is it really up to me if it is to be? And if so, what about all of this? You might be wondering right now, where's that gift I was referring to? Well, I'm here in front of you because I perpetuated this concept into action using the power of choice, the power to forgive. Before he passed, my husband was a, a great father, my best friend, confidant, cheerleader, fellow foodie, and business partner. My father and I, we did CPR, and we did that until the paramedics arrived. And then I watched them work to revive the better half of me, and I believed that he would recover, and we'd have a hell of a story to tell our grandchildren. As the coroner unzipped the bag for me to say goodbye, I willed my best friend to get up so that we could finish what we started together. And then the decisions began. Some said I should go and sleep at a friend's while others were caring for my children. I can tell you that my biggest decision was to sleep in my own bed that night without him. 
From there, I would decide hourly and daily to live, not just exist, for and because of our children. I would choose to celebrate the gift of life that we each had. When my son was murdered, I stood on the other side of the caution tape, waiting to see him. I paced and waited for hours, and at one point looked up and said, I forgive you to whomever you was. What I didn't realize is that same forgiveness would need to be extended to those who were in control of the crime scene. As my family and I waited, the goal was simply to see my son, to hold him one last time before his body changed and became stiff. As his mother, I carried him for 42 weeks. I was the first to hold him when he was born. And in death, I wanted to hold him one last time, as any mother would. I didn't get to hold my son. And in fact, we were sent that night to the coroner's office only to be met with a well-lit, empty parking lot. When I next saw my son, it was two days later, at the funeral home, he was still cold. Some time ago, I came to understand that forgiveness wasn't a feeling and it wasn't for the other person. Forgiveness is a decision that your feelings will follow and it doesn't release anyone from being accountable for their actions. One can still have feelings of sadness, anger, or even disappointment that are processing while having made the choice to forgive. What forgiveness did and does is release the forgiver from the power that person or incident can have through taking up too much brain space and leaving one paralyzed by the feelings associated with their experience. Do I still have feelings of sadness because I miss my son? Absolutely. Hurt because his life was taken? 100%. But these feelings neither run nor fuel my life. This is the power that I wanted to keep. When my mother passed, six months to the day after my son, I was almost numb from the pain. What was the decision here and how was anything up to me? I be it did become up to me after difficult decisions and conversation and the support of my father. I took myself to a quiet place in the waiting area and I cried. I wanted to know what was going on with my life. Here we were. It was Christmas time, me and my mommy's favorite holiday. So living became the decision. Different from simply existing, in the choice to live is the choice to be present every day, to smell the coffee and the roses, and in this case, the Christmas tree. To live and be present is to see where your gifts and talents might be best offered or utilized. To look to help or heal others while your own wounds are still recovering. To take time to process through thoughts and feelings. If it is to be, it is up to me. What if you said that in front of every what now, what about, how can I, or I don't matter. Chris Gardner, you might remember him from his book and movie, Pursuit of Happiness. Well, he wrote another book entitled, Start Where You Are. And one of the principles that stood out to me is this, you are where you are because you drove here. Now, I thought for sure Chris and my dad were in cahoots together because here it was again in a best-selling book, everything my father had been saying to me all along. You see, Chris was conveying that no matter what has happened in your life, you have the power to change your trajectory, to put your hands on the wheel and get in your lane and drive on. If you remember, Chris began his career like in his 30s, homeless, raising his son. And he later went on 
to have a very successful brokerage firm. So his phrase in practical terms says that we need to decide to shift gears, do differently, be and or create the change. If it is to be, it is up to me. I've learned something from watching boxing. I'm sure we've all seen boxers hit the ropes, hit the bags, etc. Well, here's my revelation. A boxer doesn't just train to hit. A boxer also trains to take a hit. That is what makes them truly a contender. Our world does look different in light of COVID, natural disasters, economic distress, and racial tensions. But here is the opportunity. I challenge you to think about what you are doing and how we become the contender in this world. How do we build the bridge that heals racial tensions, ignite scientific curiosities that seek cures, and facilitate ingenuity to rebuild economy? If change, consistency, and or better is desired, then it begins with you. The time is now to do some deep inventory of ourselves. What are we made of and what do we have to give? Is your glass half empty or half full? I like to say mine is refillable. Is it hard to choose or forgive? Yes, but the alternative is even harder. And here's what I know to be true. Regardless of the circumstance, 2020 has definitely shown us that we don't have the luxury of looking left or right to see who is going to do something about our this or assume some entity or government agency is coming in to save the day. It is you, my friend, being a good constituent, coworker, neighbor, friend, spouse, sibling, child, this gift puts you in the driver's seat of change, of your life and how you live it. You dream, you mentor, you feed your neighbor, you start that business, you give, you vote, you don't give up, you change the world. The power of you is the answer. You are the gift. If it is to be, it is up to me.